Edge girls who eat red meat could start their menstrual cycles earlier than those who don't eat it. The study was just released by researchers at U of M School of Public Health. We want to bring in Dr. Nandy now with what we should take from this. I mean, should we stop having them eat red meat or what? No, I think that's extreme, but here's the story. You know, the study followed the usual diet of 456 girls ages 5 through 12 in Bogota, Colombia for just under six years. And red meat consumed by the girls ranged from less than four times a week to twice a day. Now, girls who ate the most red meat started their period at a median age of 12 years, three months. Girls who ate less red meat frequently started age 12, month, 12 years and 8 months. So girls who ate fatty fish most frequently began at 12 years, 6 months. So you can still get protein. The idea is that we always think that, you know, red meat and, yeah. and protein. So we can get protein from, from other places. And they had fatty fish, and it was, it was different. So. so what are the risks of early onset puberty? It's people saying, okay, so you know, what's the big deal? I know you get you get on, uh, early onset of, of puberty or menarche. It's been associated with heart disease, obesity, type two diabetes, mellitus, and also breast cancer. Also, early puberty also can result in public health con concerns such as what early sexual activity, teen mm. pregnancy, alcohol, and tobacco use, because it all kind of comes in, in a big you know big package. Yeah. So, so what's so bad about red meat, and why does it bring on an early cycle? So we knew a little bit about you know red meat and early puberty, but this is the first time they talked about red meat and having early menstruation. We think that the protein or some micronutrients naturally present in red meat may be present. So these are the byproducts that are created during the manufacturing or packaging of cured meats during cooking or substances that you know they, they feed to cattle. We don't know 100%. With puberty a little bit more, but with, with early menstruation we don't know. So what are my prescriptions you know, for having a healthy diet for teenagers? Fruits and vegetables, folks. You know, pack, packed with vitamins and minerals, try to have more fruits and vegetables. Secondly, whole grains. At least half your grains should be whole grains. Remember, and not, not the stuff that you know you, people just uh, pick up and, and, and take. So, also calcium. Milk helps build strong bones. You don't always need just red meat. And protein's helpful, and you can get proteins from other sources. Remember, protein gives you energy, and good options include fish, poultry, leaner meats. Also, remember, vegetarian beans, nuts, and seeds. So, it's not always just meat. Yeah, good to know. I get so happy when I see my niece, Audra, sit down with a big salad, you know, instead of the French fries. She it's will huge, pass, isn't it? and it's huge. And if you if you tell kids early, they go on. So I, th I mean, they go on and, and live a life like that. And you got to start them early on that Absolutely. good diet. Yeah. yeah. We do have a viewer question. Yeah. Yeah, we do, and they're talking about heel spur okay. surgery. So one of my one of my viewers said, you know, what could possibly go wrong with heel spur surgery? So there's a lot. First of all, any risk to, to surgery, so risk for surgical procedures are there, including if you get an anesthetic, etc. Heel spur surgery however, is a recovery period that you must limit your weight bearing, allowing the tissue to heal. So you may be, you know, not being able to be very mobile. Also, you can have damage to nerve tissue during the procedure that could cause numbness afterwards and areas, you know, around the heel. Remember, ask your doctor if, if you really need surgery. Also, good news, most of the time, the heel pain goes away pretty quickly. So. Yeah, so surgery should be the last alternative. It is, you know, but you can still do it safely. You know, I want to let people know, keep the questions coming. Uh, we will. Thank you so much, Dr. Nandy. My we pleasure. appreciate you. Yeah, contact us if you do have a question for the good doctor. Email him, Dr. Nandy at WXYZ.com or send it to us, Facebook, Twitter. You can call us, email. We'll get it to him.